and welcome back to my channel my name is bridget a uk registered nurse if you are new to my channel please and please subscribe before you go to my returning subscribers thank you for the love and support i really appreciate it to those who are still watching my videos and haven't subscribed please remember to subscribe before you leave in this video we'll be looking at secret tips to finding teaching jobs in the uk if you want all the details stay tuned till the end and enjoy this video so without wasting much time let's start let's begin before you can start applying for jobs and i mean the right kind of jobs you need to understand the uk education system to better know which job will fit you or which job fits your qualification for job sites that you can find um job advertisements for teaching jobs i already have a video where i listed a lot of links where you can find teaching jobs in the uk so if you've not watched that video you may want to watch it i'll leave the link in the description box now back to today's agenda let's look at some of the schools you can find in the uk you can talk about maintained or community schools and this particular school requires you to have qts as a teacher before you can teach in this school and unless you are applying for the you are applying through the four-year rule then you can be exempt from having QTS before you can teach in a maintained school. I've already talked about this in my previous videos way back, so I won't talk about it today, all right? Now, let's move on into some other schools. You can talk of free schools, academies, private schools. These schools do not require you to have QTS before you can teach in the UK. There are also faith schools. So, faith schools are like schools um, set up by religious bodies so catholic schools methodist schools anglican schools those are also available in the uk but please note this even though you can work in some schools without qts as i mentioned some some of these schools may still require someone who has qts or the qualified teaching status it's like a measure of the quality of teacher that you are however it doesn't mean you cannot teach unless the job advert states specifically that they need someone with qts then they can go ahead and apply now let's move on to the national curriculum so most schools deliver or teach students using the national curriculum and this curriculum is developed or divided into groups called blocks and um this is how teachers are able to assess students after each stage and this this uh, blocks or these groups is known as key stages so when you see KS1 in a job advert, it means key stage one. But as to what ages these groups fall under is what I want us to talk about in this video. So if you take children between three to five years, they do not belong to any key stage. They are the reception group. You can call them preschool. So something like a nursery and a kindergarten. So when you take children between the ages of five to six, they form year one, or you can say basic one, and they are part of key stage one. And then also when you take children between the ages of six and seven, they are year two or basic two and they belong to key stage one as well. Then we move on to year three. Year three is seven to eight years and they are key stage two. Also eight to nine is year four and they are also key stage two. Nine to 10 also forms year five, also key stage two. And then 10 to 11, which is year six, is also key stage two. So as you can see, the key stage two is has a wider age range. And this group I've given you so far forms the basic school, or you can say the primary school. You can separate reception, and if you separate reception, then it's from five to 11 years. That's the primary school. Now let's move on to the junior high school. So if you check the UK education system very well, it seems that junior high school is just two years. So these groups are the year seven and year eight. Year seven is 11 to 12 years and year eight is 12 to 13 years. And these groups belong to key stage three. That's KS3 in case you see it anywhere in a job advert. Then also we move on to year nine. In actual fact, year nine is considered a transition from junior high to secondary school. So that year nine doesn't really belong to junior high, doesn't really belong to secondary school. It's just in the middle there. But some, in some schools, you can actually find it attached to the secondary school. And some schools, you'll find it attached to the junior high. It depends on 
how the school wants to structure their system. And the age group for year 9 is 13 to 14 years. And they also belong to key stage 3. Then the last year group, which is year 10 and year 11, form the main secondary school or the senior high school in the UK. And the age group for year 10 is 14 to 15. And the age group for year 11 is 15 to 16. So basically the secondary school ends at 16 years old. And this group forms the KS4, that's the key stage 4. Then after this, you can have the rest uh, at a vocational school and all the other schools also form their own groups. But I'm ending here because most of my people coming in are coming to teach these age groups, all right? Now that we understand the curriculum and what these key stages mean, let's move on to some actual tips in applying for your jobs. So looking at this job advert, teacher of math, this link, I use one of the links I provided in the previous video I talked about. So this link is available. Let's look at the job details. The job role is teacher. The key stage is key stage four, key stage five. Now we already know the age group we are looking at, all right? Then we move on to subjects, mathematics, working part-time, you'll be working full-time. The contract is permanent. And then this is the salary range that you may be receiving. Usually, when it's given in a range, it depends on your experience, all right? Then we move on further. They are, they are saying what skills and experience we are looking for. So this is what they, ex these are the qualities or uh, the requirements they expect you to have before you can apply for this job, before you can be successful in getting this job, all right? So please read this part very well and pay attention. And then when you go further, you will realize that this school is an academy school, okay? But even though it's an academy school, look at the requirements here. They expect someone with a degree level qualification and qualified teacher status. So as I mentioned, you can work in academy schools without QTS. However, this school requires someone with QTS for this job role. So it's a requirement. You need to meet it. You should have the ability to teach to GSCE standard. Experience of sustained delivery of outstanding attainments and achievements. Experience of innovation and creativity to engage, enthuse, and progress learners. So in your uh, job application form or on your CV, please elaborate on these points and personalize it, all right? So your ability to teach to GCSE standard, even though you are not teaching in UK and you, you, uh, your students are not writing GCSE standard, what is the equivalent in your country, all right? And how are you contributing to your students achieving very or successful scores in their final examination that uh, equates to the GCSE in the UK? Try to, that is how you are going to convince your employers. Then as we move on, they are, they are asking for experience or sustained delivery of outstanding attainments and achievements. So talk about your, your achievements or attainments or how you've contributed to students' success. You talk about it. It can be, it can be in the form of passing their exams. It can be in the form of extracurricular activities. All of those details, if you have them, you make sure you add those details to your application. It makes it convincing. It makes it look good enough for employers to consider you for. Even an interview is enough, all right? Then if the, in the interview, it's up to you to prove yourself. And then also the last point, asking about experience of innovation and creativity to engage, enthuse, and progress learners. How do you enthuse your students? How do you, I mean, make them engage in other activities except classroom stuff? And even in class, even if in the classroom, how do you encourage them? How do you make learning fun for them? These are the details they want. This is what they want you to have. So this is what they expect to see in your application. Then we read further, they are telling us what a school offers its staff, and then blah, blah, blah. You can read that one. I'm not going to waste time on that one. And then you come to applying for the job. So in applying for the job, you click on more on how to apply. But before we do that, let's move now. They usually give details. This particular website give details about the school. All right. So you can talk. So the school type is academy and the ages is 11 to 18. And the education phase is secondary. So this is secondary school 11 to 18, as I mentioned earlier. You remember. 
now the school size is there the age range again and then Ofsted reports is like um the measure of the quality of the school in health we have cqc and cqc is like supervises the health sector and tells specific hospitals and specific trusts how they are performing basically so that's how that's what it is about Ofsted when it comes to the schools all right you can read about it so the blue link means when you click on the blue link it's going to give you details about the school with regards to their uh, quality uh supervision and stuff like that okay then you can also visit the school website using that blue link you can also email them all right and you can see more jobs as well over there and then all details are there when you move on further you similar jobs nearby you can search all of them and then apply for some of them all right so that is it about it now i want to give you specific tips to help you in your application okay when you take these job adverts some of them will give you an application form that you can click on it will download on your device and you complete and then send through a given email address some sometimes they may request for uh, your cv in addition to the application form so when you are reading your job advert please take your time to read it carefully and understand what is required of you to do some will ask you to send only the application form some will ask you to send the application form and any other documents you deem relevant so with this you can send your application form you can send your um cv you can attach your teaching qualifications your school certifications just to prove that you meet all the requirements okay now when you are completing the application form you usually come across something called supporting information please treat us as a cover letter however you don't need to add the uh, addresses your address recipient's address and those details it's not necessary but it will be nice to add a salutation it's more like greeting the person dear sir or madam okay and then you start writing please keep it formal formal language all right at the beginning try to introduce yourself give a bit about your qualification just like the way you write a cover letter all right when you move forward talk about your skills talk about your uh, experiences by now you've also read about the school you are applying to please do that read about the school you're applying to and then write something about a school their mission their vision their values and relate it to yourself personalize it okay if the school you're applying to is saying on their website that their values or their value states that they are kind how kind are you to be able to work with them and aside this when you're writing your supporting information in fact in your whole application form please check spellings don't make spelling mistakes and in your supporting information especially check your grammar now some jobs as i mentioned earlier will require you to complete an application form and submit through an email some are uploaded automatically online some of them you have to send through an email if you are required to do this please keep your email formal the most important part is the subject i've seen people writing their message in the subject please don't make that mistake that not you can't even write enough in the subject you can't write anything it's it's really limited uh words so you can't put anything there all right so what you can do is please add a subject write job up or type in job application for example the position you saw online or the job reference number so you can apply application for job as a teacher or application for job as a mass teacher the way you saw the job adverts online then we move on to the body of the mail also treat as formal all right so dear sir or madam that's your salutation and then you briefly introduce yourself you may think because they are adding an application form when they open the application form they know who it's coming from please don't assume things that way when you when they receive the email it's better for them to see a, a message before they open your mail so in briefly introduce yourself briefly give your skills for example this job that is requiring you to have qts you can state that you are an international but you have the uk qts in your email so when they see the mail they know that you have that kind of qualification then when you are when you are done typing your mail please remember to add 
subscription all right or uh we we call it signature okay so your full you can write, type in your full name your job title and then your phone number please remember to add country code and please i forgot to mention also include or also indicate the kind of document you are adding or you are attaching to the mail so attached to this email is the application form uh, my cv anything that you, you added or anything that you are adding mm -hmm. now one very important thing you need to do before you complete any app or you start any application is you need to contact the school find out if they employ from overseas or they employ internationally trained teachers if you have QTS, for example, you can include that you have QTS. It might increase your chances, okay? So go ahead and contact them from the emails and phone numbers they provide attached to their uh, job adverts. Find out from them. Hello, uh, through an email, hello, dear sir or madam, uh, I am so-so and so. I would love to find out if you recruit teachers from overseas. I have the UK uh, qualified teaching status and I would love to work with your institution. Something nice, you know, and find out. Maybe they don't even recruit from overseas, but by the way you put your email, by the way you put your message, they may be tempted to go for sponsorship and employ you. You will be surprised because it has happened to some nurses where employers without sponsorship told them to hold on and they applied for sponsorship just to spon uh, uh, just to sponsor them to come to UK and work with them because of the way they communicated so communication is very important try when you are uh, when you are contacting or you are reaching out to any of these schools try to put in your best communication skill and impress then my final tip to you all is that please try your best i know this is not going to be easy by try your very best to get referees who have domain emails domain emails otherwise called uh professional emails or institutional emails please employers like those ones better than the personal emails so my dear teachers you know i've got you at heart anything to help to guide you through this relocation process i'm here for you and i'll keep bringing you good information that will help you through this process so stay tuned to this channel all right and um as i mentioned i will not disappoint you i will not disappoint you but before you go remember to like the video remember to comment and also share to a colleague thank you so much for watching